I think a lot of the carnivores believe that in that I'm not worried if my cholesterol goes up, especially with the work of Damon and that group. But in terms of saturated fat, I think when people do see like the LDL and they see an H or a high marker right next to their blood work, and then their doctor says, you need to get on this statin right away, they start to get worried. And the question always is, well, why does saturated fats or if they do, why does why do my markers go up a little bit? But what is it about the seed oils or canola or vegetable soybean oil? Why are we using that over saturated fat? Is it really that the seed oils don't cause heart disease versus saturated fats? Well, this is a big story. And it really is like it is the heart of the story of my book. And I don't, I don't want to go into it in too much detail and exhaust every, your <laughs> listeners. But <laughs> The original argument was that saturated fat causes heart disease. Right. And that was made by Ansel Keys from the University of Minnesota in the mid 1950s. Nobody knew what caused heart disease. And there were a number of plausible explanations like it was vitamin deficiency or the rising tide of auto, auto exhaust or the type A personality where you just run around screaming at everybody and then have a heart attack. I mean, these were seriously considered hypotheses in the mid 1950s. And sort of the key moment was when President Eisenhower had his heart attack in 1955. And so the whole nation is trained and focused on what causes heart disease. So into this debate or this vacuum about of knowledge of heart disease steps Ansel Keys. He says it's saturated fat and dietary cholesterol that cause heart disease. And he, his idea, he was so persuasive, so aggressive about his um, ideas. A little bit like you were talking about Michael Greger. I mean, really just super persuasive, would not stop talking until somebody was, you know, he had convinced them utterly. He was, he was a very strong personality. He was able to get his idea implanted into the American Heart Association, such that in 1961, the American Heart Association issues the first guidelines anywhere in the world telling people to avoid saturated fat as the best way to prevent a heart attack. That was it. That was the beginning of this whole story was that one American Heart Association guideline. So after that, I learned and discovered in, in my research that the American Heart Association had been accepting huge donations and was in fact kind of launched as a national organization by Procter & Gamble, maker of Crisco Oil. Back in 1948, that, was, that had all begun, those relationships. And the president of the American Heart Association was found posing with a bottle of Crisco oil like he was some, you know, advertising flack. So it's, you know, it's quite possible the American Heart Association had vegetable oil money behind it when it conveniently discovered that saturated fat was bad for health. But that's the story. It was give up saturated fat, which largely meant cutting back on regular fatty meat and um, and switching over to low fat dairy which didn't even exist at the time like had to be created low fat milk and dairy free milk not even to mention the soy and almond milks we now live with and then replace it with vegetable oils so that was like the huge boost given to vegetable oils you know like wesson oil corn oil they were even marketed for their cholesterol lowering powers it was like ask your doctor to tell you about vegetable oils like it was a medical prescription. And that was very intense in the 60s and the 70s. So why does trading out saturated fat for vegetable oils lower your, first your total cholesterol and then your, um, and then it was your LDL cholesterol. That's because plant oils or vegetable oils or more properly known as seed oils, they contain, what is it called? They contain, I think, phytosterols. I'm not, I, I forget the word, but it's, it actually replaces the, the cholesterol in your cell wall. So, which is not good for the cells because the, your cell walls need to be stable and fluid. And so, but these plant, these plant oils actually replace cholesterol and that's why they lower it, why it comes out lower in the readings when they, your doctor measures it, measures them. So, they're just getting rid of the cholesterol in your body. But, you know, as anybody knows, cholesterol is a complex molecule. It's involved in so many hormonal reactions in your body. They're the foundation for your, many of your hormones, including sex hormones. Like, so we are, we're not functioning properly as humans if we're 
if we're not having adequate cholesterol or not producing enough cholesterol or trying to lower our cholesterol. One of the things that I found that was found in clinical trials was that the people who lowered their cholesterol, and these are large clinical trials, the people who lowered their cholesterol by lowering their saturated fat and replacing it with vegetable oils consistently died at higher rates from cancer. So that's clinical trial evidence, really the most rigorous kind of interventional level evidence that we have. And it shows that lowering cholesterol causes cancer. So I think, which is just to say, there's like, there's multiple side effects from giving up natural whole saturated fats. Saturated fats are the only fats that existed in cooking or eating before really in, until the 1900s, we all, we, you know, in the West, it was all butter and lard mainly, and then tallow and suet. And those were the fats that we cooked and we ate with, as we cooked with and we ate. So really we, we created this system where we called saturated fats bad and seed oils good. And the reality, as I discovered, like in the course of my decade of research is that it was just the reverse that was true that we have really, really messed up our minds on what are good healthy fats and, and what are bad fats. You mentioned the phytosterols for the replacement of some of the fat that's in our outer lining of each cell, but there's also other toxins in uh, seed oils. Can you mention some of like, what is so bad about seed oils if I had a little bit, you know, every single day? Well, you know, there's the, the research that I did was that I discovered was the fact that seed oils are, they're very unstable molecules. I mean, they're called polyunsaturated fats and the poly, the multiple part is the multiple double bonds they have. Okay, so if you remember your chemistry, double bonds are between atoms and in conditions over time or especially in heat and light, those double bonds open up and they each connect with oxygen. Okay, so what is ox oxygen? Is, is uh, things are oxidized and that drives inflammation. The reason that people take antioxidants is to get rid of all the, the oxidized particles. Those are created by seed oils and to a lesser extent, foods that contain high amounts of seed oils. So that would be nuts and seeds are very high in them, but also um, chicken is higher in seed oils because especially because of the way we raise it now. And um, depending on the pork, pork can be fairly high in polyunsaturated fats. But vegetable oils have the highest concentration of these polyunsaturated fats. So especially when heated, they, they not only oxidize, but they then degrade into these called perioxidation products is what they're called. They're kind of like, they're sort of they the literally hundreds of these kind of spin-off molecules that are created when these polyunsaturated fats are heated and these molecules some of them are like polymers like paint like substances and and they get they they're like shellacs they've done in, in in i mean i could tell you stories that would horrify you but they're 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 highly so and and because they're unstable they're reacting with everything and when you eat a piece of fried chicken from, from a fast food place, they, there have been more than 200 of these perioxidation products that have been measured in a single piece of chicken. They are absorbed by your body. They pass through the, the, the brain body barrier, the brain blood barrier that has been shown. A lot of this work was done by this phenomenal researcher at the University of Minnesota, whom I interviewed named Chelani. And, and one of those perioxidation products is called aldehydes, which is a known cause of cancer. So I think that the evidence from the clinical trials and also from this woman's work make it, make seed oils a very likely cause of cancer. And then I think the other probable cause is for heart disease, just because of all these inflammatory process um, products and the fact that we know that inflammation drives heart disease. So I would say cancer and heart disease are, are likely health outcomes from having seed oils, fried food. There have been other people who have looked at seed oils. I mean, Chris Kenobi wrote a book about them. Um, Dr. Kate Shanahan just has a book out and they make claims that seed oils cause obesity and diabetes. I mean, according to 
Dr. Kenobi, they really cause every chronic condition. So I disagree with those assessments because I don't think the evidence is strong. But for cancer and heart disease, I think the evidence is, is substantial. Yeah, I think when we, so I looked into seed oils and how they process the whole thing and they heat the product, I think more than six or seven times and the heat point of when these oils will turn. So this is just one other facet of why seed oils are so bad. But every time you heat it, it becomes more rancid and it's then it becomes, like you said, all of those peroxidase, it becomes oxidized and it will steal all the electro and make everything inside your body more unstable and then inflammation ensues. And inflammation is sort of modern days, um, why modern day illness exists. And so then they heat the oils while they're making it from some of the plants, I think six or seven times. And then we, if we're using it in like the fried, the fried oils, I don't know how many times they're using that oil for how many days and such. And then if we heat it in the microwave, and so there's just so many times that we're heating these oils that become more and more rancid. And then that can then cause inflammation and inflammation again can cause all the other illnesses. So I can see that. Um, and I, yeah. and it just is unfortunate. So I'm not aware that they, in the processing of the oils, say from the most common oil that we consume and that's used in all restaurants is from soybeans. Okay. That's the most commonly consumed one. There's also sunflower, safflower, corn oil, but really the most, the cheapest and most commonly used one is soybeans. I don't know if they, heat the oil multiple times when they're processing it, but certainly just having oils around a long time on your counter, <laughs> where they will they will slowly oxidize over time, right? And then if they're not in a dark container, but even just over time, they'll oxidize. If you go and like, it's like if you eat a nut that has been sitting around for a long mm -hmm. time, you can taste that it's rancid. And, and then, yeah, and then if you put it in a restaurant fryer, then it's, that oxidation reaction, like we all know from chemistry class, oxidation speeds up wildly when you heat something. And ironically, it's, and I talked to people who supply the oils for places like Burger King and McDonald's, and they said, ironically, those chains are much safer. I mean, I'm not saying any of this food is good to consume, but those chains, because of their liability awareness, because they're such you know big targets, they have all kinds of mechanisms. They they check they they change the oil more regularly. They put something called nitrogen beads in the oil to absorb the oxidation products that are in there. They put uh, they have a nitrogen blankets over the oil, which is which is imperceptible, but is there to try to prevent the oxidative products from spreading into the air. I mean. They take it very seriously. So paradoxically, they may be safer than like your average mom and pop or, you know, a Chinese restaurant or something that's just frying up massive amounts of, of, of food in the back in the kitchen. So yeah, in general, I mean, it's really good to try if you go to, you know, if you're eating out to try to have things cooked in butter. Yeah, I think what when I did the research, it was on canola, canola and rapeseed plant specifically. And that's when they heat it like six to seven times. But I didn't look into oh, yeah. soybeans. Well, canola, so yeah, canola is from rapeseed. So right. that's a different and I haven't I, I, I don't know what their process is. I actually yeah. went to a, a vegetable oil processing factory. So <laughs> I like I knew, so I saw some of their product. I mean, it, it also goes through you know, it's an incredibly harsh process. Like they, it, when it first comes, when it's first pressed out of these beans or seeds, it's, it's like a gray sludgy substance. Right. So they have to, you know, they have to do what's called winterize it to make it more stable. So it's, and then they have to bleach it so that it, it's a nice color and they, you know, they do, and then they have, they've taken out all the vitamins and out of it. So they have to put the vitamins back in. So, I mean, it is a, it's a harsh and complicated uh, industrial process to make these oils. And yeah, that's why, I mean, it's an, it's amazing that, that doctors and people, I, I think people are waking up to seed oils because it's like, it's just an intuitive, it's intuitive to understand that there, that's an industrial product and butter is not. So <laughs> I think people kind of understand that intuitively, but still it's, you know, you will not find a medical expert in this country who will recommend, I mean, you know, except for very, very few who will recommend natural 
whole saturated fats over polyunsaturated vegetable oils. I mean, it's completely the reverse. And our dietary guidelines recommend five and a half teaspoons of soybean oil every day. And that's what kids are getting fed in schools. Oh that's what people are getting in hospital cafeterias. That's what our military gets. That's, I mean, everybody is getting, well, that's for 2000 calorie a day diet. So, but that's, like, that's what people are being fed.